Well, that was a real rumble. Coming up next, my Royal Rumble pay per view review, thoughts and opinions. Until then, and only then, you know what's coming up next. Yes, more of that damn intro. What's going on guys, from the Project, back at it again, aka David Rivera, in here for my Rory Rumble 2017 pay-per-view review, thoughts and opinions, I'm gonna start things off where we had the kickoff, which is two hours, crazy, at least we don't have that, each and every pay-per-view, it's only for the big four, so that's fine, otherwise it would be a little bit too much if you ask me, and with this one, with the kickoff first match, where we did start things off, kind of took me off guard, it kind of came out of nowhere, no pun intended to what happened early on, or later on, I should say, for the Royal Rumble match, but with that being said, I will be able to stay things off here, that we had the six women tag team match between, of course, Team Becky and Team Mickey, I thought this was going to be on the main card, but uh, with that being said, a nice showing for Mickey James and Becky Lynch going at it. We did see the returning Naomi here. She actually was able to help get the win for Team Becky on that. So maybe we'll get to see Becky Lynch and Mickey James at WrestleMania. I'm sure I'll probably get to see them, of course, March 26th at the next house show. I'm going to Chris Boston Fan Series in every one. So that should be dope to see them there. Uh, maybe Naomi will face Alexa Bliss for the SmackDown Live Women's title. And I know we got Elimination Chamber before WrestleMania. So anything can happen with that. But Team Becky, surprisingly, actually getting the win. So pops to where it is for that. And then where we had the Raw Tag Team titles on the line. Cesaro and Sheamus and the club going head to head with two referees there. And in the end, the club actually getting their win, which is really cool to see. And maybe now we'll see Cesaro and Sheamus actually finally have their best of seven series come to an end with their final match at WrestleMania. So that could happen. So you never really know. And the final match, which was actually surprising too, Nia Jax and Sasha Banks, where I thought Sasha Banks was going to win. But Nia Jax actually was able to somehow, somewhere, get a win over Sasha Banks. And actually get the win. So we'll see what happens with this feud. It might continue. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see what remains there. But until then, let's get right into the main card for the Royal Rumble. Alright, so we start things off with the actual main Royal Rumble. Of course, in here for my Royal Rumble pay-per-view review with thoughts and opinions for you guys for today. And I'll get into how I feel about the rest of the show a little later. But with that being said, we start things off for the main card for, yes, the Raw Women's title, Charlotte Flair and Bailey. Definitely a nice way to kick things off for the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. And these two actually went back and forth and I like the exchange between the two and to see who was going to get the Raw Women's title and in the end at one point Bailey was almost going to win but Charlotte Flair keeps her title so can't go wrong with that I would have liked Bailey to get the win but I like both women so Charlotte winning is fine she keeps her not only title but she also keeps the winning streak for pay-per-view wins and we'll see who's going to be able to stop her maybe another match between Charlotte and Bailey coming soon maybe at Fastlane but that remains to be seen so there you have it with that and then where we have the next match where we had the Universal Championship which would be on the line between Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho high above in a short cage and this one wasn't too bad it was a good match between the two and at one point Roman was coming close to getting a win uh, we also saw Kevin Owens use the breast nuts by Chris Jericho helping him out that was pretty interesting, like really Amigo used to do. And not only that, the use of the steel chair. Uh, with that being said, 
Uh, we had like the pyramid type of setup, which is pretty cool, so we did get to see that. And in the end, Kevin Owens somehow getting the win and retaining the Universal title. I know Chris Jericho was happy to see that as he was lowered down from the shark cage. And I didn't really care for that stipulation, it's kind of weird to me, but hey, it is what it is. And Kevin Owens retaining, so that's fine with me. Then we get into the Cruiserweight title match between Neville and Rich Swan. And this one actually wasn't too bad, uh, where we had Neville getting the win and the Cruiserweight title. First time in a while that Neville has been champion, so this feud hasn't been that bad. It actually has been entertaining me. So, with Rich Swan, he did well with the Cruiserweight title, and now it's Neville's turn. So now he's calling himself, of course, the King of the Cruiserweights, and now he's got his title. So we'll see who is going to be able to face Neville next. And then we get to... Of course, the WWE title match between Chad Cena and AJ Styles. And this time, these two actually did their all, especially even more. So this one was probably one of my favorite matches of the feud. And basically seeing it all, from all of John Cena's moves to AJ Styles' moves, from the Pele kick to the calf crusher to John Cena's leg drop, and everything else in between. And in the end, John Cena, yes, tying Ric Flair's record of being 16-time world champion. And I gotta get props to John Cena on that, even though I'm not the biggest fan, and I don't got his shirt and everything on. But I do respect him for that, so can't go wrong with these two, especially what they've done and everything. And I was hoping AJ Styles would get the win. So with that said, John Cena was able to get the win, and then to end things off going into the Royal Rumble match. And with this one, with the Royal Rumble match, not too many surprises actually coming out of this, except for a few. We had Jack Gallagher from the Cruiserweights in there, so that was fine. Ty Dillinger, yes, at number 10, was hoping for that. I found that really crazy, and I was like, done after that. I thought that was really cool to see Ty Dillinger at number 10, so that was dope. And right after that, James Ellsworth making his Royal Rumble debut on top of that and with the other stars that we did see of course Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, The Undertaker, the whole entire Riot family, The New Day, uh, other people like that and everything else in between so like I said not too many surprises at all just a very few I was hoping to see uh, some other people from NXT, it could have been any other returning superstar that we haven't seen in a while. But, you know, just a few of those that were like the main few surprises, at least for me, in my opinion. Which is kind of crazy for it being the 30th anniversary of the Royal Rumble. But in the end, I was hoping it would be either Undertaker or Chris Jericho. But Randy Orton surprising the hell out of me. And... I even had Finn Balor coming back and having returned to win, but that didn't happen at all, which is really crazy. And Seth Rollins didn't actually somehow so way get into the Royal Rumble match, which I was kind of expecting that too, since he was able to show up at NXT Takeover, but that didn't happen. So you know, it was a little weird Royal Rumble match to say the very least. And Roman Reigns almost winning his other Royal Rumble, but then again, Randy Orton was able to come back and win it. So now. Basically, the WrestleMania main event is out there, Randy Orton and John Cena. Again, this time for the WWE title once again on SmackDown, live for their brand, but at WrestleMania, of course. So, I don't know if they're going to actually just have a singles match, or maybe one of the Wyatt family members will get involved. Maybe make it a triple threat, but it seems to be one on one. And I know we see John Cena renewed a lot, but this time now at WrestleMania, I don't know, I feel like someone else could have run the Warrior Rumble like The Undertaker or Chris Jericho, but that's just me, so we'll see what happens with that. And uh, there you have it, WrestleMania basically being written right there and actually having the first match for WrestleMania. Of course, John Cena renewed, and I'm sure Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. And then just a few matches already out there, possibly for WrestleMania. So, again, weird rumble if you ask me. Um, I guess pretty good to good overall. I really like John Cena, AJ Styles, and Charlotte Flair, and Bailey as a whole. So there you have it for the Royal Rumble. What are your own thoughts and opinions? Who did you want to win? And who 
do you have going for WrestleMania and what do you see going for WrestleMania overall as a whole for other matches and all that stuff and your thoughts on the winner of Red Dewar and winning the Royal Rumble with that being said. And only then, that has been my review, thoughts and opinions for the Royal Rumble. And until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video. In the next video, whatever the hell that may be. See you guys.